Brittany asks, how do you personally take charge in a meeting when you feel others are being disrespectful? I guess Brittany's asking for herself and for everybody who's listening. For me, I mean, I just get involved. I mean, first of all, <laughs> I mean, 99% of the time, the context of the meeting, I have the leverage. Either I, it's my meeting and or, you know, I have a lot of authority or street cred to open my mouth. Is the, one more time, how do you take charge when you think somebody else is being disrespected? You feel others are being disrespectful, maybe it's uncomfortable. Yeah, no, I see this all the time and I see people struggling with it, especially if they're in middle management or the new kid on the block or an intern, but they have the EQ or the empathy and they're like, oh, this is unfortunate. And, you know, I, I would say that, you know, there's only two ways to live life. To, uh, to tactfully address things or to eat it and have regrets that you didn't address it. Uh, what's the name again? Brittany. <laughs> Brittany, you know, I think that you have choices here. Look, you, you know, if I was in a meeting with this crew and I was being disrespectful to Stefan and India felt like she wanted to say something, what's running through her mind is if I call Gary out here, you know, and first of all, she has a lot of context on me, so she's probably thinking, oh crap, Stefan's doing something wrong that I don't know about because Gary's usually right. But let's say I was tone deaf and I didn't have equity with her and it was her first week. You know, she's thinking that if she calls me and says, Gary, why are you doing, you're being rude. She's thinking, oh crap, that could get me fired. And then like, what does it mean to me? Like, like people are doing practical versus, there's always the pressure of doing the right thing versus the practical thing. And then you're always questioning, are you good enough to know what the right thing is? You know, there's all that stuff. You know, I don't know, I have had a very successful life, forget about career, on being comfortable of addressing things in real time in the room if it needs to. My level of thinking of disrespect is quite high because I like combativeness and competitiveness and, uh, and I've also always had leverage. I work for myself. So my advice to myself or like how I think about the world is very different than the advice I'd give to a lot of people. I, I think you go with the one strike policy. India should grab me or send me an email after that meeting and say, hey, I felt a hair uncomfortable with the way that you were treating Stefan in that meeting. Can we either talk about it, she grabbed me in person, she could send an email. I like in person because no context is lost because if I got that email from India, I'm like, I'm like that's a little prima donna for a youngster. Like she doesn't know all the details but if she told it to me, I'd be able to feel the energy. That's one lesson I'd like a lot of you to learn. Sending a text or sending an email where there's, it's an important moment, you're losing so much context. The energy, especially if you go to an EQ person, the energy is so powerful when you can create the context so I highly recommend that but I would probably go with a communication that wasn't confrontational in the room with that manager or that boss the first time, behind the scenes, lightweight, treading water, and then A, seeing how they respond because I would respond, and we've been there and done that, India, I would respond favorably which would make you more comfortable and safe to talk to me again. Others would be like, shut your mouth. And that would make you not as much comfort and then I would address it in the room the second time. If I said, shut your mouth to India and then she did it again the second time, a couple things would happen. She'd feel like she was getting that off her chest. More importantly, I'd be like, damn, she really does care about this. Um, you know, it's just life. Like, doing the right thing is always the right thing. You just gotta make sure you're doing the right thing. Way too many people romantically wanna fight against the system, fight against the boss, fight against the company, and I've had people in this organization that have barked up the wrong tree because they've worked in other places where the person doesn't give a crap and doesn't turn every stone and doesn't have a ton of context. Um, that is something you need to be careful of. Do not walk into a buzzsaw because you do have a manager or a boss that actually knows what they're talking about. Now, if you're great at EQ and the tone and the taste, roll, let it roll. But this is not a very simple question. There's a lot of angles as you could see in two quick seconds that I've given you here. It's a lot of context building. Who are you standing up for? I mean the amount of times that people here have stood up for somebody who's straight losing, like doing the wrong thing, but their homies, out of, I mean, Matt, you know, let's talk to you because they hear it from this. Look, okay. we, we have a tremendous culture here where, sure. where I, I, obviously I'd like to say that, but how many friends do you have in this company? Like people that you actually hang out with outside of work? A solid amount. Give me a number. Uh, 15, 20. Great. So first of all, everybody who at Vayner's watching this is now wondering, wait a minute, my number 21 and what the hell? Oh, I, thought, sorry, guys. I thought we were friends. <laughs> 15 to 20, I think anybody who's watching we would all recognize, that's a big number. Yep. There's a lot of people watching here who don't have a single friend. That's everybody just, if you, what, not if, when your friend, one of those 15 to 20, complains yep. about Vayner, yep. it's impossible for you not to take their side, they're your friend. Exactly. I mean, that's an impossible game. Absolutely. And I assume, I'm asking you now, 
you know, it's even though you like me and think I'm a good guy and it's a good company, good culture, it's so much easier to be to have Janet's back than the company's. Sure. That right there is the issue at hand, right? You might be standing up for somebody. You might have you ever wanted to stand up for somebody? Yeah. Have you? Sometimes yes and sometimes no. Right. And so it's just tough because you don't know every, I mean, I know a lot of the friend pods in this company. I, I knew to ask that question because I knew it was a good outcome because I, I know what's going on here, right? E- even people that are a little quiet or, or what have you, like are finding friends, I mean, it's amazing, right? We got a good thing going. The, the danger of that is blind support to your homies versus what's going on in the office. There are people here who are the greatest human, I literally want to adopt them. I literally want to adopt them. Hey, come in my family, I love you that much. Who are? Average workers. That's just real life shit. To think if I was their homie, outside of work, and had all the feelings of the the humanity that is them, which is remarkable. I want to adopt them. And to think about them complaining or struggling, why didn't I get promoted, my boss is not taking care of me, this and that and the other thing. It's impossible for the other 550 people here intermingled with each other not to support that person. They're the best. But I have the optics of another thing, which is the black and white. Not the warm and fuzzy, the do you have the skill? I'm the greatest guy of all time. I don't think LeBron wants me on his basketball team. I do not have the raw skills to provide him value for what he's trying to achieve. I'm the best. And if he wants to do business, I'll make him more money than he can even realize, even more than he makes, which is more than he can realize. And that's the game. And so that's the other part of the equation. You gonna step up for the greatest person of all time? Cool, you just might get caught because they're actually below average or not doing a good job, or they may actually act differently. I mean, this is happening here too. There are people that outside of these four walls I want to adopt, but when you watch them, how they act within a work environment, they're just okay. A lot of sweeties, and then a little snarky or manipulative and political in the building. That's just real life. So know who you're standing up for. Interesting shit. Got really deep. Yeah, it got very deep. You know, that's something we can all learn from. I've learned that lesson. Like, I know this guy, he's the greatest. I'm like, wait a minute, he sucks in the store? Like, I saw it with my own friends that work for me. So, anyway. It is intense. It's intense because it's so, this is where judging where you work or who you work for is the key. Like, you know, and understanding what they're good and bad at. Meaning, you could have a great manager top, top manager, and they might be strong at X, but they might be bad at Y, and if they're bad at Y, you need to, be, you need to context that. There's no blanket statement even on the person. But I have a lot of points of view on your strengths and weaknesses from a lot of different people. Way more than you'd ever think. Oh, sure. <laughs> In a good way, meaning like, it's just like, it's, it's why we're so calculated here of what we do, because we don't take the main boss's point of view on somebody. It's 360. It's contemporaries, it's friends outside of work, it's people that never heard of them, it's people that work for you. You can't just be like, oh, the boss, if you let that, they'll just manipulate what's in their best interest. Because they're just human, it's not their fault. But I think that's what makes our place tick because people have seen very senior people not win the battle against very junior people and then that's like, whoa. And that's cool. So, I don't know how I got on that tangent, I know how. It's, if you want to step up for somebody in the room, you better know all the scores. The conversation, the skills, all the people involved, all of it.